Have you ever finished a quilt and then had the horror of finding a hole or a rip seam? You wonder whether you have to rip it out or start over? Is your quilt really ruined? And will your recipient notice it? This happens to everyone at some point, and I have five solutions. So stick with me and I'll show you how to fix it. Hi, I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. I give you tips, tricks, and strategies to help you make the quilt that you wanna make. And if you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button. Is there anything worse than finishing a quilt and discovering a hole in it? That marathon of effort and time, and now it's all ruined. First, it happens to everyone. Even experienced quilters have mishaps that they don't notice until the end. Secondly, all is not lost. In fact, it's another opportunity to add personality and texture into your project. Unraveled seams are probably the most common mistake, and it occurs mostly at the edges of your quilt or where your seams intersect. In quilting, we do not backstitch because it adds bulk to your seam and it can often chew up your fabric. To prevent this mistake in the future, use a smaller stitch, approximately 2.0. Press to the side. I know this is one of the big divides in quilting style, but seams that are pressed open are weaker. When you do sew your final rows, that's when you can do a back stitch. The bulk is not gonna matter very much under the binding. And when you press, don't swish. Swishing puts extra pressure on those seams. To fix this problem, grab a lightweight thread, 60 weight or higher. I use Invisifil by Wonder Threads. And choose a thread in the same color as your fabric, not your thread. Then start under the edge of the fabric and come up the fold. Do a whip stitch up the seam with the short stitch on the outside of the fabric and the whip side traveling up the seam under the fabric. Make a knot and bury it under the fabric then trim. So in this version of the whip stitch, the short stitch is on the top and the whip is underneath the fabrics traveling up the seams. And in this version, it's also a bigger stitch. It's six to 10 per inch. If you have open seams, you will use a ladder stitch. Bury your knot behind your fabric and come up where the seam is still intact. Grab a couple of threads sideways and then do the same on the opposite side. We travel up the seams a couple of threads at a time and then we pull the threads tight. And it produces a nice flat seam. This is also an opportunity to add decorative stitches. I will often do a cross stitch here with embroidery thread. You can choose to use thread that blends or contrasts. Your choice, and I call them quilt kisses. You could also use a decorative stitch with your sewing machine, but test on a practice piece first. And remember that this result will show on the back of your quilt. Fraying seams is a really common mistake in beginner quilts. It happens when the fabric is sewn too close to the edge. It can also happen when the seam allowance has frayed too much before the quilt top was quilted. To prevent fraying seams in the future, practice making a perfect quarter inch seam. This means accurate cutting, straight sewing, and a really good ironing technique. And I have a video on all three and I'll leave that link in the notes below. Trim, don't pull your threads. It's hard to resist, so keep those snips close. I have three separate pairs in my sewing room so I won't be tempted. And store your quilt top with the wrong sides together to avoid friction. To fix this, if there is minimal fraying, you can roll the seam over and whip stitch like in part one. It's best if you start several stitches before the fraying and end several stitches after. If the fraying is more severe, you will need to add some structure. Take a piece of fusible like stitch witchery or interfacing. Place it under the fray, then using a piece of parchment paper to avoid getting glue on the faceplate of your iron, press. Keep your iron over the fray long enough for the glue to melt. Then let it rest to set. 
Next, you need to add reinforcement stitches. Simply darning by hand works well, but often I just use my sewing machine. Stitches should cover at least a quarter inch more than the fray, and I choose a thread to match the fray to blend in. But note, this shows on both sides of the quilt. You can add quilt kisses or other decorative stitches as desired. Bigger frays that expose the batting or frays on open seams should be treated like an open hole that will cover in part four. Slice cuts are when your fabric comes in contact with an open rotary blade or the tips of your scissors. Unfortunately, since it's a clean cut, that is there's no raggedy or raw edges, these can be easily missed until the whole quilt is together. You can prevent these kind of cuts by making it a habit to close your rotary cutter. I know that's easier said than done. And keeping your sewing space clear. Make it a habit to tidy up your tools and fabric often. And this is not hard to do if you have organized your space into zones. See my video on how to organize your sewing space part three. You can follow the same process to repair a frayed seam. That is using a fusible to hide the cut and fine darning to reinforce the fabric. However, depending on the design of your quilt, you may take the opportunity to add more surface design with raw edge applique. You can use squares, diamonds, rectangles, hearts, and other shapes. You can even use prints if you want. And if you make several patches and spread them out over your quilt, no one will even know that you are hiding a mistake. Make your patches by fusing your fabric to a lightweight fusible web and cutting out your shapes. Then place as desired. Then fuse them in place with a hot iron. Reinforce every shape with stitching, either with plain stitches around the edge or add a design. Holes are any mistake where the batting underneath is showing. This can be a rip, a tear, a puncture, or a burn. These are accidental mistakes, so there is no real prevention. And it's very important that they are addressed as quickly as possible not to damage the batting underneath, which leads to a whole nother level of repair, which I will talk about in a second. You will need another piece of fabric for this repair. It can be the same, similar, or contrast entirely. In my interview with Ellen Simon, she had tips on how to match discontinued or older fabrics. I'll leave a link to that interview in the notes below. So you can place the fabric under the hole and darn it like in part two, I would use a water soluble glue on the edges to hold it in place while you darn. But you can use pins if you prefer or a fusible. You can choose to hand darn or use your sewing machine and you can use a thread that blends or contrasts. You can also choose raw edge applique, which will work better here as the tear is on either side of the quilting. I choose this purple strip, the same size of the block, and after I've outlined it with stitching, I do a wishbone free motion pattern. You might also try turned edge applique. On this old quilt top from my last video, I found a burn hole after the top was finished. I took one of my paper pieced hexes, sprayed it with starch, gave it a good press and let it dry, and then removed the paper and the basting. Then I stitched it over the hole with a whip stitch. If the batting is damaged, trim away any damaged fibers. Then trace out the size of the hole, and with a matching piece of batting, cut out that shape. Depending on the size of the hole, you may choose to secure the new batting to the old with some fusible tape or a couple of loose stitches. Then repair the top and if necessary, the back with one of the previous methods. Just a few more things. We stress out about mistakes, but many times they are barely even noticeable. Take a look at this old quilt top from my vlog number 11. Can you see the hexi patch? I know it's there and I can barely see it. 
for all methods. If you originally used a pre-wash fabric, use pre-washed fabrics in the fixes. And note that these tips are for repairing new quilts, not older, well-loved ones. Check out the link to my video on all the mistakes I made while making my sugary dew quilt and how I fix them. And there's one there to my interview with Ellen Simon. Links to other videos that I've referenced are in the notes below. Don't forget to subscribe, take care, and I'll see you next time.